in five years, where do you expect or want to see UFL? In five years, we want to be number one. Yeah. 100%. Hi, I'm Lewis Barton, gaming content creator at Mirror Gaming, and today we've been joined by Eugene Nashlov at the UFL headquarters in Cyprus, finding out all you need to know about the brand new football game. What made you want to make UFL in the first place? It's a mixture of uh, luck and love and passion for football. We want to focus on the online aspect of the, on the football story. Second thing was that we want this game to be free to play because uh, there is a certain, certain philosophy element to it because football is very accessible to us I mean, in real life and we wanted to recreate this feeling with the game we deliver and thus uh, it has to be very accessible to everyone. Rather than trying to compete against EA and their licensing like Konami have uh, with eFootball, they've just completely avoided that route pretty much. They've thought, okay, you know what we're going to do, we're just going to go for the player licenses instead, which they've done, and they've got 5,000 of them out of 15,000 available. Um, so you can use authentic players or authentic appearances, but just not in the authentic kits and the authentic clubs and the authentic leagues and all the authentic stadiums. So there are a few teams with licensing that you will see in the game. For example, West Ham United are a partner of UFL, so they'll be in the game with their stadium, with their kits, with their players. Um, but not all the teams, so you will see some of them, but none of the major ones. The football scene right now is dominated by EA Sports with their EA Sports FC game series, so how would you plan to compete with such a big company? We decided that we can deliver a much better live ops operations than our competitors because their model implies big you know, big updates on a yearly basis mm. and our models, model implies that we will be updating both the core and the meta game, adding new modes, um, adding new features and iterating upon all of these things regularly, just like, I don't know, Fortnite would do. The second one would definitely be the feel from the game. Our case is we want the game to be fun, it's like number one point that we, we put up, and we want it to be reactive, we have to have a good response rate from the gamepad, and it has to be relevant in terms of football culture. We have to squeeze in a 90-minute match into an 8-minute match, which basically means everything is happening faster. In, in that regard, uh, we're not trying to be like a super, super realistic case. We want, we want to be a fun, enjoyable, responsive case that you can play with your friends off and offline and enjoy it. I want to see what's different in this game from the last beta, so let's just give it a bit of a pass around. Instantly the passing feels way quicker. I noticed that in the open beta first time round. I've been carved open already. Okay, so there was Salah through one-on-one -on -one sprinting and it did seem like he slowed down a bit. Again, I don't know that's the game trying to keep it a bit fair, but it was not a full sprint. It should have been a lot faster than that. We don't want the game to be a pace abuse game. The reason we want to do it is a very football reason. Like I think it's one of the first things you learn playing football is that the ball travels faster than you run. And so this is so much a game of passing. And so if your game is a pace abuse story where all you need is, you know, basically your ultimate parameter for a player is pace, you're trying to, to get all these players who just have pace and then players who have great passing, cool vision, great positioning, but do not have good pace, they become irrelevant for you mm. when you're choosing the players for your team. And in football, we're currently uh, looking at, we have Luka Modric, Toni Kroos, we've got lots of players who are not in their best, you know, running shape, mm. but they have Ex, you know, fantastic skills in passing and positioning and actually playing football. And we want these players to be very relevant for your roster. We want you to play these games because their through balls have to be fantastic. Sometimes, sometime later, we will definitely introduce legends. And so you will have Perlo, right? He's not the guy who should pay, outpace yeah. uh, Vinny, right? Yeah. It's, it's just stupid. But he has to bring value to the game and his value is this football value when he reads the game he's doing great position play he is very effective in build up he can give you through balls and and balls that are you know creating danger for the opponent stuff like that you want it to stay so that's what i put into this football yeah. relevance this is the skin pack so in these you get player skins um when it opens you'll see so in this one we have 
Okay, there you go. A left wing and a centre mid skin. Uh, what I loved the most about UFL's open beta was the card designs, the animations. I think it just adds so much variety. So when you play someone, your squad will look nothing like theirs. These cards can then be applied in your club. So say, for example, have I got a left winger in my club? Um, yeah, here we go, Ander Martin. So I can go into player menu uh, and view skins. I can apply this skin to him. As you can see, it improves some of his stats. So it improves his heading, finishing, and jumping. So that's your way of, you know, and these skins can be applied and taken off as well. So say you apply it to your 65 rated winger, and then you go and buy a new left winger who's 80 rated, you can take it off him, put it on him instead, so he gets the boost when you put him into your team. There's a feature in the game, the online uh, aspect of the game, that I really thought looked quite cool, the skills section. How does skills work? You can upgrade your players. Hmm. Uh, the more you play, the easier it is for you to grow their parameters. You can make a very moderate player quite a good one through time. Yeah. It will require quite a time from you. And it's more of a decision for you to make, either you wanna, I don't know, upgrade a tier two team to become like high level, mm -hmm. or you just wanna go for the top tier players, which will cost more uh, in comparison to the players whom like, I don't know, tier two English, French, Italian football does not matter, mm -hmm. uh, whom you'll have to spend substantial time upon to actually upgrade to that level. So that's one part. The other part is the perk system. And so the perks are the abilities you get um, at certain levels of progression of every player. And they give you like additional attributes and stuff. They can affect the meta game and they can uh, affect the core game, but still perks are very important. And, um, and on top of these two, you also have skins. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in our case, skins uh, is a separate uh, thing from, from the players themselves, because we want to recreate this feeling that we had when we were kids, when you had to, you know, put a Panini sticker on, on this magazine and I stuff. Skins are my favorite features. The animated teeth, they look so cool, yeah. And they're gonna be even better than they were at OBT1, so I'm, I'm hoping you guys will like it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and so the skins, they also have a rarity system. And so the, the rarer the skin, the more attributes it brings to the player, both in core and meta. And besides that, there are collections of skins that will give you combined effects. So you will be exploring the player progression, the perk progression and uh, the skin progression. And these three si systems uh, will actually create the meta game for you personally yeah. on what will be your team, how you want it to play yeah. and what it is all about. It'll be interesting to see how they keep the game fresh though, because if you look at the market, like they said, there's 5,000 players. If you play this game for a month straight, you get all the coins you need, all the RP, and you buy every best player. You could have the game, or if you have every best player in the game, in your team, after a month, I don't know, will they be adding promos to the game to help you improve? Because that'll be, otherwise it'll get stale quite quickly. You know, if I'm using the same team for nine months straight because I've unlocked every possible player, the game can get stale quite quickly. There's the, this question that we're constantly being asked, uh, and that is, what will you do when I have the best team? We're looking into a, an operation model that is uh, closer to MOBA games than to the football games that are currently present in the yeah. market. Because uh, by MOBA games, I mean, for example, League of Legends. We have come up with an idea and the system that will be some way shaking this matter for you. These basic parameters of our football players, they are updated on a approximately monthly basis in the transfer market. Yeah. But in between the seasons, you will have a more significant change that will incentivize you or not, depending on how good you are with your scouting, to actually change your team for this new season. You also mentioned a season pass potentially being added. Um, this was a free version and a paid version. Inside of every season, you will have a number of team passes. And so team passes what we call a battle pass, a classical battle pass mechanic, where you have a free version of it and the paid version of it. And so you will get different rewards depending on the, the free and paid version. And so majorly what we will be introducing in the battle pass are, first of all, uh, customization and vanity items. And this will not just be the ones we design. These will be branded, licensed, cool football related items that I'm, I'm like 100% uh, sure you will enjoy. Mm -hmm. 
and there will be different thematic battle passes coming from time to time. Uh, so that's the part. Second thing, uh, you will get some power-ups from there, which will help you maximize profit out of every match, which in the long run gives you an opportunity to uh, get better players faster. And, and, and the third part would be, I think, like the, we also will be having stadiums there from time to time. Yeah. And besides that, like on the, on the last pages of the Battle Pass, will give you an opportunity to uh, get yourself some, a new player for your roster. Mm. So you will get a player both in the free version and in the paid version. The only difference is that when you are playing the free version of the Battle Pass, you will have to choose like from three. Yeah. And in the paid option of Battle Pass, you will have more to choose from. Okay. But the parameters and the, is basically, they are basically in the same, uh, you know, in the same ballpark. Have you got to like put your own money into the game, like actual money to buy the currency to then buy it in the actual so, game? So yes, though so the paid version yeah. uh, of the Battle Pass is about paying your, I don't know, let's say money. Yeah to acquire this hard currency in the yeah. game and which you can then spend. Okay, on. perfect, yeah. Well, there you have it. That's everything you need to know about UFL. So let us know in the comments below what you think of the game and if you're gonna play it.